Okay, today we're going to be taking a look at the magazine game Africa Oriental from Strategy and Tactics, issue number 128, copyright 1989 by 3W Games. I'm going to go through uh, game credits real quick. Um, this is uh, East Africa contains many rules and concepts from the Europa game systems by GDW. They are copyrighted by GDW and are used here with their kind permission. The credits as listed are for those areas of this game not taken from other Europa games. Europa is a registered trademark of the Game Designers Workshop Incorporated used here with their permission. Africa Oriental uses elements of the Europa system with GDW's permission. Africa Oriental is not a product of 3W nor should it be construed as an official GDW game. Design and Development Jeff Brown, Special Assistance by George Mitchell Order of Battle Research is Vance Von Boris Playtest Advice and Assistance from Mike Babb Steve Babb, Jim Crust, Vince DeSimone, Ted Galashi Bob Goldsmith, Vance Von Boris. Map is by Leslie Freeland, and the counters and rules production are by Larry Hoffman. Uh, included within the uh, magazine is an article, The End of Italian East Africa, by Vance Von Boris. Some of the articles included with this issue is the end of Italian East Africa, the new Roman Empire bites the dust by Vance von Boris. We have the issue game, Africa Oriental, the Allied Blitzkrieg of Italian East Africa, designed by Jeff Brown. The first golden era, it was nearly 20 years ago today at SBI by Al Nafi, David C. Isby, and Joe Balakowski. Uh, cover is an illustration of an 1941 Italian picture postcard from the editor's collection. We have outgoing mail for your information, classifieds, incoming mail, and errata. Africa Oriental contains the game components listed below. The Africa Oriental rule set one map covering the Horn of Africa and adjacent areas at a scale of 32 miles per hex. The hexes on the map are numbered to facilitate locating areas on the map. One counter sheet with a total of 200 counters. One set of African Oriental charts consisting of one combat results chart, one train effects chart, one unit identification chart, one turn record chart. It also contains one Africa Oriental Order of Battle. You will also need a six-sided die to play the game. The rule book is printed on a glossy paper and it contains 22 pages of rules and includes most of the charts and tables that you're going to need to play the game. within the rule book itself. This is a unit identification chart. We have the turn record track, some holding boxes. Over here we have unit identification uh, chart, some of the markers, weather table. We have combat results table, ground combat, we have air combat. We have a bombing table, and we have an anti-aircraft fire table. And interspersed within the rules, but not counted as rules, are um, some advertisements and feedback and that type of thing, which really break up the uh, flow of the rules. We have a train effects chart, and we have some notes, and this is the map legend, which um, I like to use the Master Europa um, colorized um, map legends. I think it's a little bit more 
detailed and easier to use because here you have to know that mountain is dark brown, sand is golden brown, you know, that type of thing in your hex sides, especially as they relate to railroads and roads. They're a little bit, um, they're not very intuitive when you look at them to tell whether it's a railroad or a road sometimes. Anyway, you have your supply summary, you have your armor anti-tank effects. Um, over here, you have rail movement rates, overrun movement costs, miscellaneous movement costs, air base or air base table, patrol attacks um, chart, air unit escape. You can combine Africa Oriental with the war in the desert rules. And let's see. I think that's pretty much it for charts and tables. There may be some back here. There's going to be some setup uh, tables here. One for the Axis order of battle and one for the Allied order of battle. And then we have just a copy of the uh, counter sheet on the back. The counters themselves are printed with a glossy finish. They're of moderate thickness and the information presented on them for the most part uses NATO symbology. The, the, let's see here. Um, we have, like for your standard units, I don't know if we can see that here or not. This unit here would have an attack strength of two with a movement allowance of six. Um, this unit has an attack strength of 7 with a, a movement of 8. It's an infantry unit and it is a division sized unit. These represent aircraft. This one, for example, is composed of mixed airframes. It has, uh, let's see, I'm going to double check my charts here so I don't give you completely false information. Go back to this. This is a South African air unit. The upper left hand numeral is the air attack strength. The middle um, letter is F for fighter. The number on the right upper upper right hand uh, corner is air defense strength. Basically, it's attack and defense. Uh, like I said, it's a mixed uh, unit with mixed airframes. This number over here is its tactical bombing strength. If it had two numbers, like on this mixed unit, it would have the tactical and then a strategic bombing strength. And then the final uh, number in the lower right hand corner is its movement rating. And I'm not sure if that's eight out and eight back or four out and four back. I think it's eight out and eight back. And units like this, these are transport counters. They're used to transport supply um, from uh, supply heads down to the units themselves. This is an anti-aircraft unit with a strength of five, or is that a movement allowance? I'm not sure. I think it's a strength. Um, and then you have different markers and stuff, which I'll try to get up here. Uh, fortifications, air uh, airfields. These are supply indicators. The counters are back printed. Fumble around here with them. I know it doesn't look like they're back printed, but yes, they are. Um, I'll have to look at the anti-aircraft. Uh, let me look real quick. That's its movement rating. Okay, so the others on the back were five. This must be when they're uh, in place or whatever. They have the zero movement rating. You've got light. You've got heavy anti-aircraft. Let's see. Over here... Kind of the same thing. Your markers change. This is uh, half supply. I'm not sure the other ones were with the full zero. Two steps, one step. I think this has two steps and the other side has one step. Not sure. These are hit markers indicating that you've scored hits on uh, various uh, areas on the map like installations or air bases, cities, that type of thing. And that's pretty much it for the counters. There are headquarter counters. Um, 
which you can uh, use them uh, in an off board. Put the units under it, off board, and just use this counter on the map. The dots indicate self-supported units. Support is very important in the game. Certain units like divisions are self-supported. Um, some uh, regiments and brigades are. The, if they're not, then their strengths are halved. Maybe this is an unsupported. This is an unsupported indicator. Sorry, I long time since I messed with Europa. Now it is a supported indicator. It means that it has its own integral support of artillery and other supporting arms. Units that are not supported um, suffer uh, severe penalties in their movement and combat abilities. The map, this paper map, it's glossy, contains a hexagonal grid to regulate uh, the movement and positioning of your playing pieces. Uh, it contains various types of terrain right at the moment. I'll try to figure this out because, like I said, they don't give you a very good terrain effects chart with this game. Uh, let's see here. Where did I put it? Uh, probably just dropped it on the floor here. No, uh, just a minute here. Now, well, let's see. There's so many charts and tables involved in these games. Uh, must be in the rules. Anyway, we'll just move along there. Lakes, obviously, rivers. Rough, and I think the darker rough is mountainous. There is some errata that this should be a lake. I mean, it looks a little blue when you look at it real close, but um, it is indeed a lake. There are these are like swamp or marsh hexes. Over here we have. Uh, woods, more swamp or marsh. I'm not sure which one it is, but pretty much the same. Um, like here we have, these are cities. This is also a supply source. And then I think it's like a major city, or not a major city, but um, uh, I think it's a dot city is what they call it. I'm not sure. We'll get into that a little bit more when I actually start showing examples of play and stuff. These are, I think, I don't think they're reference cities. These may be dot cities. I don't know. Anyway, that's a that represents a town or city, and the dark ones represent uh, uh, towns or cities, whichever. These are roads. The dotted line are roads. Down here. These are rail lines. Um, these are obviously sea hexes. There's three different um, sea areas. The Red Sea. Um, I don't remember what they are. But there's like the Red Sea, the... Um, I don't know. Some other type of seas. But anyway, there's three different... Uh, um, 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 sea areas, and these apply for these are important for naval uh, naval transport and stuff. Um, anyway, that's pretty much it for the components. I printed out some of the charts and tables just so they're a little easier to have on hand. But obviously, I don't have all the information that I'd like, or I could have. Uh, oh, here's a map legend. We have clear, light brown for rough, dark brown for mountains, like I said, green, wooded, that type of thing. Where are we at on the camera? There we go. So, you've got your hex size. Here we go. Dot cities, reference cities, railroads, roads, permanent forts, and the weather line. Uh, let's see. The example of the weather line would be right here. These are light blue. Um, light blue lines that run across the map. 
other than that, that's pretty much the map. And uh, I'll come back and start uh, showing the sequence of play and going through part of the sequence of play and show you how uh, the game plays. So.